Phil Lear. I'm a featured artist here at the Squash Blossom this month, and I have a series of Western work um, that uh, we've been promoting. So I'm here to talk about uh, uh, this piece here in particular today. Um, this is called the, uh, the Greatest Cattle Drive. It's uh, kind of depicts two old partners, and uh, the story behind uh, uh, their adventures is pretty pretty amazing. During the Civil War, a lot of things kind of got put on hold uh, in the country, um, but once, once that was over, um, things started picking up, but that included uh, expansion out west, uh, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of people were moving, a lot of trails were being, uh, being forged in the country that would be used for, you know, a century afterwards. Um, um, and in, uh, in Texas, a lot of cattle had to be rounded up that had been roaming free for for four years because uh, no one was around to take care of them. These two old partners, Oliver Loving and Charlie Goodnight, were their names. Uh, uh, they got back and they rounded up a huge, huge herd of cattle that they, uh, that they farmed and ranched. And they realized that as people were um, heading west, uh, up north, um, they were down in the south of Texas, at the very bottom of the country, really. Um, they realized people were going to need beef up there because there were no ranches settled. There was no, uh, um, there was uh, n nothing established. Um, so they 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 took their uh, their their cattle and they drove them north. They were the first men to ever take cows north out of Texas. Um, they carved a brand new stock trail that was uh, became used by everybody in the business over the next 50 years. Um, they crossed rivers the cows had never crossed. They went through wild, unsettled territories even the army wouldn't go into. Um, but they made their way all the way up from, uh, from uh, pretty much close to the Rio Grande all the way up into Wyoming. They built one of the first ranches up in Wyoming. Um, Charlie Goodnight would go along with the herd um, behind Oliver Loving, who would ride up ahead and, uh, and get contracts to help finance you know, these cattle drives. Um, they invented the chuck wagon so their boys could eat better on the ride um, and supplied a lot of uh, reservations and little towns with much, much needed beef. Um, they had huge, huge contracts with the army, sometimes up to $200,000 they were owed uh, for what they supplied to the military. Um, so they pretty much blazed a trail um, about two-thirds of the country uh, north to south is where they uh, they took their cows and uh, really changed uh, how things were done and kind of set in motion the whole cowboy era. And they were uh, they were famous. They were um, pi real pioneers, but really uh, captains of industry when it came to uh, uh, cattle driving. Um, and in fact, their uh, their exploits were uh, uh, turned into first a book and then a great Western epic called Lonesome Dove, written by Mary Larry McMurtry. Um, that's pretty much, if you've seen that, that's the story of these two old partners who, uh, who took cows and drove them north and uh, it, um, set up one of the first cattle ranches in the, in the north uh, countries, the territories there. Um, again, along the trail, uh, one of the partners, Oliver, Loving would, would ride up north and make sure things were set in motion when uh, Goodnight got, got, to, got into town. Um, everything was, was uh, set to go. He was ambushed, unfortunately, on one of these trips and uh, was shot in the leg with uh, some arrows by a Comanche war party. He was able to escape, but he uh, made it to over to a, a nearby town. Um, and when word got back to uh, Charlie Goodnight, his partner, he left the herd and raced, uh, raced on ahead to go uh, catch his friend uh, on his deathbed, basically. And they spent uh, the last couple moments together. Um, and uh, Loving, who, who was about to pass away in a few hours, uh, asked him uh, for a favor. He said, I want to be buried back home. I want to be buried back in Texas. So uh, when he died, um, Charlie Goodnight loaded his friend up onto uh, the back of his mule and uh, passed his herds driving north as he was taking his friend back down south um, to lay him to rest. Um, I got a lot of inspiration for, uh, a lot of my western genres come from, uh, from movies and things, but Lonesome Dove is a particularly 
emotional movie to watch. It's a, it's a great film if you haven't seen it. But that's that's basically a, this is a depiction of uh, the end of the of uh, of the adventures of these two these two old partners. Lighting is always kind of interesting um, to tackle in a painting, um, especially sunset light like this, um, where there's all kinds of color happening and uh, reflections and. Uh, uh, if you paint on location, this kind of lighting is very difficult to capture because you only have a few minutes before it's completely changed on you um, and your shadows and things are on different sides. Um, I was worried about making some of these figures too dark because they're kind of backlit, um, but I think I punched in uh, some good details. I'm trying to give them a glowing effect, um, especially since they're standing in the water. But uh, one of the fun things about light, and I learned... Uh, uh, how to do this by looking at the uh, the California Impressionists is, uh, is to paint in, in little little dabs, almost like uh, you'd think of Monet or some of the, the French. Um, that makes colors resonate off of each other and next to each other. So it's, uh, that's how I try to paint light. And I think I was able to capture that, um, especially with this water and using the yellow and orange complements against the, or the purple. Some of the attention with this painting um, it kind of starts here and I created a bit of a diagonal here going um, to, the, to the light and then you draw your eye back. Um, what's not immediately noticeable, and um, this is kind of intentional, was that you, you, don't, you, you see this calm evening scene and then at the end you realize um, the somberness of, of what this journey is, that uh, this is a burial, this is a, um, a funeral march basically. Um, so. The body here is not uh, what a lot of folks tend to notice at first, and then their eye settles on it later, and they get um, a bit more of the depth of what uh, what's taking place in this scene.